And for Off the Block, I'm Vinny Lopes, and we are now joined by Lewis Men's Volleyball Head Coach Dan Friend after his team got had an impressive rivalry win going on the road to beat Loyola in four games, and they are now in sole possession of first place in the MIVA. And Coach, I ask, how would you assess your team's play tonight? Well, I thought we really fought uh, through some great points. Uh, did a really nice job from the service line. I think we ended up with uh, eight aces on nine airs. Uh, and brought a lot of pressure. Um, I thought early in the match we kind of left some points on the table, but uh, as it progressed, we started to turn some of those points that we created from the service line uh, and ultimately uh, put us in a position to win. Well, talking about the match with the way it played out, you know, first game goes into overtime, tight match. You know, what does it say, but you then are able to rally back and win the next three. What does that say about your team that you guys are able to overcome a tough overtime loss and um, still continue to get out of the win? But so far with this group, they they really play with a a high level of confidence. Uh, you know, in terms of just you know good or bad points, they just keep going after it, and uh, they've said it themselves. You know, it's like you know next point, let's go, let's move, and so it's you know uh, it's it's a good energy and a good flow by them right now in terms of that. So, uh, and we're looking to just continue to grow and sustain that. If we can do that in those tough matches, and we're going to lose some of those uh, and bounce back the next game. Uh, it says a lot about your fortitude as you move forward. Yeah. Now, now talking about later on in the match, I do have to ask, you know, third game was close, fourth game, you guys came out, went on a huge run up to 10-3 to three at, at one point. So of that fourth game, what, what do you feel was the big difference that allowed you guys to go on that really fast start? Well, I think it was the third game that catalyzed it. I think we were down uh, in that third game, 2017, uh, and then – you know, ultimately we made a late push in that game and uh, and really flipped the score and put us in a position to win uh, and turn like three points in a row with a serving sub and a blocking sub. And so uh, it goes into that next game. And then from the service line, we just brought a lot of pressure right to start. I think Coonan had three of his five aces on that run, uh, yeah. you know, and tagged a couple sidelines. And then, you know, Bouge tagged a sideline. And so it just really broke open the game uh, from the service line uh, and turned some points and really – uh, put a pretty big gap on the game for us and then stayed steady the rest of the match or rest of the game. Yeah. Well, you talked about your pins a little bit. Do you want to ask you about one? Julian Moses had a match high in kills tonight, hit about 400. Can you just talk about what he was able to do, be so successful out there on the court? Yeah, I think he continues to get more comfortable on the right side. Uh, you know, ultimately with us, uh, you know, Mitch Perinar has been out with a injury for the entire year up to about a, a week ago and he's, uh, working himself back on the court, and uh, Julian's kind of slid over to the right, and we've been able to kind of use all three outsides continuously on the court. So you just, I think you're continuing to see him get more comfortable over there, and so, uh, and it was pretty terminal for us uh, throughout the night. So it was awesome to see, uh, and you know, Coonan, we, we continue to ride, and he put up some nice numbers as well for us. So, yeah. Coach, I do want to ask you, maybe for the people who haven't played volleyball at a high level. Uh, very much including myself, well, myself in that category. What is the biggest challenge for a player switching over from the left side to, to the right side? Well, I think it's just, you know, especially the out-of-system attacking. Uh, I think uh, in-system, uh, not as much sometimes for, for the good attackers. Uh, some guys, you know, naturally are good from both spies, and then some guys aren't quite as adept. But uh, I think, you know, being patient, letting the ball cross your shoulder as a righty, uh, when you're on the right side and you haven't been playing it all your life, that can be a little bit different. Uh, so it's more just some adjustments and tracking the ball as an attacker. And uh, I think he's done a nice job for us continuing to get kind of better over there. Yeah. Now, Coach, do I ask, you know, you look at this match and what it means. Obviously, a lot of volleyball left to be played, but you are in first place right now in the conference. Obviously, huge in the MEVA, as you know, regular season determines your seating and home court advantage. How important is it for you guys to have home court during the MIVA tournament? Well, I think, you know, it's it's great. I think that's why you fight for it. It's like, uh, you know, ultimately every game is important in terms of uh, putting you in that position from a conference standpoint, for sure. So, you know, our goal is, you know, you know, is to put ourselves in that position at the end of the year to host as many games as possible because as a home court advantage, there's a lot of comfortability in terms of that. Uh, any road game you can get is a huge bonus. You know what I mean? you got to take care of home and see how many road wins you can get. In this first half, the guys have done a great job with that, you know, being on the road at Ohio State and McKendry, uh, you know, and getting those wins, being on the road at Lindenwood and Quincy, and uh, being on the road now at Loyola. So you, you look at that first half there and, 
Uh, those are all big score wins for us, you know, and I think as we get into the second half, you got to take care of home, uh, and that'll be a really important piece for us. Yeah. And, Coach, final question, we'll, we'll let you go on this. You know, for for those fans who, you know, may not be, you know, fully accustomed to MIVA volleyball or as plugged in as, as some, can you describe what this rivalry is like? Because, you know, obviously it's intense, but there's a lot of respect on both sides. I'm not sure I can. You know what I mean? So there's, uh, and you know this, yeah, you've been around long enough and seen it, but when you were a student at, uh, Ball State, all the yeah. way to been everything you've been doing, you know what I mean? So I just think it's, uh, there's a long history before I even got here, you know what I mean? You know, in terms of that rivalry piece. And so, uh, you know, and so it's garnished over a lot of years and there's been a lot of great matches between the programs and, uh, in terms of that. And so I think, you know, for us, you just go in and you battle. And in case you've been in it, like, uh, maybe I have over the years, you probably don't quite get a grasp on it. And I think there always seems to be more and more layers, you know what I mean? So, you know, the, the addition to, to, to McCarthy over there now in terms of that, uh, you know, they got a couple of good wins against us last year, you know what I mean? And so I just think, uh, you know, for me, I just treat each one individually and, uh, and kind of let it be what it is. And uh, as an outside fan, there's certainly a lot of emotion involved as well as the players themselves. So.